Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yoda Bowl fam, it's the director. Chargers fans, we are at that point of the offseason, baby. Draft season is in full effect as we are officially, what, like 30 days? Maybe less from the NFL draft. Talks are heating up. Rumors are going crazy. J.J. McCarthy might end up being a second overall pick in this draft. It's about to get nuts out here, man. But as for the Chargers... I think the narrative has remained more or less the same, especially with, you know, talks of Jim Harbaugh recently on what the fifth overall pick means in this year in particular. Yeah, it might as well be pick number one with all the quarterbacks that are looking to come off the board in our top five. So today, the Chargers narrative is going to be the top three, the big three. Lake Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Rome Adunze, three of the most likely players to the Chargers at pick number five. We're going to run it, baby. Three mock drafts, mock draft A, B, and C. You guys will let me know in the comment section below which one you prefer. Yes, there's going to be some trades. There's going to be, you know, some talk of guys up, some guys down. Should be a very interesting one this week as, once again, we are closer to draft week. We should be seeing mock drafts more or less at least once a week from here on out. Before we do get started, shout out to the sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use code DIRECTOR to match your first deposit up to $100. Get in on the action. A great way to support the channel and have some fun along the way. Newcomers definitely take advantage of the offer on screen. Before we do kick off, hit us up with a like and sub. If you do enjoy this Chargers content, the small amount of time you guys take to hit the like and sub button helps me out a lot. Let's get into it. Lights, camera. Action! Your Chargers Mock Draft 3.0 featuring the big three. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty interesting one, man. Do the Chargers go wide receiver? At this point, I feel like it's probably the most likely outcome. We're going to do more mock drafts in the future, going over other scenarios like offensive line trade downs, a better, more uh, aggressive, et cetera, et cetera. But for today, man, again, the narrative is driving us in one direction, and that one direction has certainly been wide receiver. There's three very talented wide receivers at the top of this draft. We want to see which one the Chargers are going to get in on the action with. So let's kick things off like you guys. Uh, I think by this point, we kind of know how the director likes to do things, things, three mock drafts, A, B, and C. You guys can let me know in the comment section below which one you prefer, uh, some things you would like to tweak. Sometimes people like to rank them as well. Let's kick things off with mock draft A. This one I think is more or less a stick and pick. The Chargers have done the trading they want to do in the offseason. Uh, they made it out with a couple extra selections via compensatory and, and trade with Keenan Allen. At number five, the narrative is going to go down as such. The Chargers are going to get lucky with the way things are going, with the, the narratives that have been painted, the, the J.J. McCarthy story that's being told, and a team will trade up and grab the talented quarterback at number four, leaving the Chargers their pick of the litter at pick number five, of which I think the Chargers are going to select absolutely if he is there. Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, Ohio State. Now, of course, there's a couple of things that have to go down for the Chargers to land this guy, but quite honestly, it's becoming more and more apparent that this is a very very realistic outcome. As a matter of fact, I put out a couple of videos over the course of the last couple of weeks talking as to how I think Marvin Harrison Jr. has a realistic shot to the Chargers. Maybe met a little bit of pushback, but I think at this point, with all the rumors that are swirling around, because it's not just one or two you know, teams going after quarterback at number four anymore, it's quite a bit for a very specific guy. Um, it feels like Marvin Harrison Jr. the Chargers is very much so alive. And it kind of feels like Maybe a strategy has been unfolding this entire time with Jim Harbaugh to help ma help make that happen, does it not? Going way back as far as one of his first interviews as a Los Angeles Chargers head coach with Rich Eisen, talking about how he believes 
J.J. McCarthy could be the number one quarterback off the board, which is pretty absurd to think about, especially back then with Caleb Williams lighting up the charts. Everyone's wanting a slice of this quarterback uh, uh, class. And, and I think it was very uncontested as to who we thought some of the top three guys were. And at that time, I'm pretty sure it was Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels. Well, at this point, new narratives are starting to unfold. It feels like that opinion of Coach Harbaugh has spread throughout the league like, a, I, I don't know, just like wildfire. And all of a sudden, we're starting to hear rumors that, J, that J.J. McCarthy could go as high as number two overall to the Washington Commanders. Can you believe it? McCarthy, who was once a top 25 pick, has risen all the way up to number two. And this pushes valuable talent down to the Chargers at pick number five. Even if the Commanders do what we all think they're going to do and take Drake May... There's also talk about the Patriots taking JJ. There's certainly heavy talks about the Cardinals trading down to get a monster amount of picks via, I don't know, the Giants, the Vikings, to pick up JJ McCarthy. It just feels like four quarterbacks in a row in this particular draft is very real. And I think the end result of that, that Chargers fans should certainly be celebrating, is the idea of Marvin Harrison Jr., one of the most talented, pro ready prospects we've ever seen fall to the Chargers at pick number five. And at this point, you could argue the Chargers, a lot of analysts out there saying, oh, the Chargers, we're gonna, they're going to go offensive line. They're going to do the Jim Harbaugh thing and, and build that running attack and you know start the transition to power and blah, 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 blah. Certainly, that could be a possibility, but I feel it's very unlikely to pass up best player available, even for Joe Hortiz, to start building the Harbaugh system. I think at this point, you see a talent like Marvin Harris and heck, the other three, or the other two wide receivers as well, and you say to yourself, "There's no friggin' way I'm passing up on this prospect." If you want a tackle, I think trade down is probably the best way to do it. But at this point, at pick number five, sticking a picking Marvin Harrison Jr., he's going to bring that sauce. He's going to bring that number one wide receiver aspect to this team. Certainly, the loss of Keenan Allen is going to be felt, but Marvin Harrison Jr. gives us a very very bright future i'm talking guys this is going to be the next some people say deandre hopkins i say like julio jones the man's going to be a superstar chargers will be very happy there all right round number two chargers at pick number 37 are going to select kool-aid mckinstry cornerback alabama now let me start off by saying that i ran these mock drafts a few times okay i was looking for guys that landed in specific rounds specific spots a couple of different ways but the biggest reason and I decided to put Kool-Aid here to the Chargers, sliding all the way down to 37, was to display the power of our draft position this year. Do I think Kool-Aid makes it out of the first round? I don't really think so. I think the Chargers, if they're looking at a second round corner, there's going to be some pretty good names there, but Kool-Aid would be a huge slide and a big get at 37. But that's just the point. Every single season, something crazy happens. Players make it out of the first round that have no business being in day two. Kool-Aid McKinstry, who's been sliding for weeks and weeks and weeks, I think uh, it was confirmed for from a couple of friends on Twitter, was a, the, the foot injury, I think a Liz Frank injury during the combine. Uh, that may concern some teams from drafting him in the first round. He'll be fine, you know, by the kickoff of the season, maybe even a, a training camp. But the fact of the matter is, a talent like this sliding into the second round, into the range of the Chargers pick at 37 is, is very possible. I'm not saying it's going to be Kool-Aid, but it's going to be somebody. Somebody is going to slide into the second round. And because the Chargers have the fifth position in this draft, it means every single round following round number one, they're going to be top of the pecking order. And this puts the Chargers in a fantastic situation. Because you have to also consider what these other teams are going to be doing in front of us. All these teams that pick quarterback in front of us, they're looking for skill position players to kick things off. And it's a very deep wide receiver class. I wouldn't be shocked if we saw two or three wide receivers taken back to back to back in the second round from teams that went quarterback in the first round. And it could maybe just so leave some defensive talent on the board for the Chargers at 37. Kool-Aid McKinstry would instantly be in contention for this team's number one cornerback. I think him and Asante Samuel would duke it out. Ultimately, Asante can play inside outside, so he'll probably see a little bit more slot work. Who knows what the Chargers are deciding to cook up there. Either way, 
Poulet would be an awesome add to this team. Awesome coverage skills. Definitely athletic. I, 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 a very, very smart football player as well. I think Kool-Aid would be an awesome slide to number 37, but also represents the power of high draft position. This could be Kool-Aid. This could be somebody else. I, one of my favorite ideas is Chop Robinson. Sure, we don't need him now, and maybe the position that falls to us at 37 is not an immediate need, but best player available is very powerful in this particular draft with the amount of talent and the position for the Chargers in the second round and beyond. So the Chargers in the first couple of rounds, sticking and picking, get their cornerback one and uh, and wide receiver one, certainly. Let's move into round number three, where the Chargers are going to select Blake Fisher, offensive lineman out of Notre Dame. This is a guy that's rumored to be looked at by the Chargers pretty heavily. This is the monster right tackle in the Notre Dame program that really fits what Jim Harbaugh is trying to do. What Joe Hortiz likes to build in an offensive line, these power guys, these big dudes are going to move bodies, create space for Gus Edwards. This is the beginning of the movement. And I have to point out that, yes, it is likely the Chargers are in play for offensive line in the first round or two. However, Joe Hortiz, the new Chargers GM, this man with the Ravens, which he had a lot to play, a big hand to play in all these selections, did some of his best work on the offensive line in the middle rounds, sometimes the late rounds as well. Some of their best linemen, including Orlando Brown Jr., were selected in th rounds three and beyond. I think you're in the territory now where the Chargers, in this very deep offensive line class, are going to start trying to bite on this position. And Blake Fisher, to me, is a fantastic option in the third round to get your big guy on the outside, the true right tackle prospect that starts building this power scheme at a value. And it's not possible unless you're looking at this particular draft class. <laughs> this is so deep at the position of offensive line and wide receiver, two positions we desperately need, that Blake Fisher in any other draft is quite literally a first to second round pick. Very, very nice prospect there. And I think the Chargers add themselves a piece that Jim Harbaugh wants, that Ortiz wants, and starts building the future. Yes, Trey Pipkins, I think there's going to be, you know, maybe a bit of mixing and matching there on the right side. Um, maybe Trey, I don't know, bumps down to swing. Who knows what happens? But for the future, we're starting to build something here. So Blake Fisher, fantastic option in the third round. Sticking and picking, the Chargers do have two fourth-round picks. I'm going to have them taking... With their first one, Cade Stover, tight end at Ohio State. Talking about building the future, this is also a fantastic future-proofing selection in the fourth round. Sure, there's probably some offensive linemen I like better here. There's probably a receiver or two I like better here. But Cade Stover, in this class, which isn't particularly strong at tight end, he's actually a pretty solid steal in the fourth round. He's going to be the kind of guy that, I don't know, potential-wise reminds me a little bit of a Hunter Henry, but better in blocking. This guy is quite good in run blocking, really fits what Jim Harbaugh is going to ask of his tight end one, but also brings a lot of upside as a receiver. The dude's kind of a monster out there. Great hands, you know, decent routes. He feels like a modern-day tight end, especially with how he's going to fit into a system that, uh, that features a lot of running. Feels like Cade Stover is the future of tight end. Hayden Hurst is going to buy some time for the Chargers to have that receiving weapon at the position. But Stover's the kind of guy that I feel like can step in year two, year three, and be that difference maker in this system. And again, some of the best tight ends in the league came from rounds three, four, and five, uh, including guys like George Kittle and, and uh, even our Baltimore guy and Mark Andrews. It just it feels like a pretty nice selection. Mark Andrews might have been a second round pick. Either way. Feels very, very good. And round number four, Cade Stover, a great weapon, great blocker, very system fit guy for the Chargers to future proof that position. You can get him involved this year too as a blocker. Um, spread him in here and there. It, it feels like a nice spot for him. Finally, our second fourth round pick via the Chicago Bears. The Chargers are going to select Ania Smith, wide receiver out of Texas A&M. Now, there's a lot of talk the Chargers are going to go double dipping at the position of wide receiver. Getting rid of your top two options created two huge, huge holes on this roster with very big shoes to fill. I think the Chargers get really lucky in this draft and pick up two of the best for what they're going to need. 
Of course, Marvin Harrison Jr., a bona fide number one wide receiver. The Chargers could be in need of a slot guy. And Aeneas Smith is a very, very nice option in the fourth round. Quite honestly, at this point, round four and five, you're going to find some really good talent for slot receivers. There's a couple other guys we may mention in this video, but Aeneas Smith is a fantastic slot guy. Great separation, decent speed, good hands. Just feels like a steal, quite honestly, um, which again, in any other draft is a third, maybe late second round pick. This would be a great option for the Chargers to all of a sudden really round out this wide receiver room, which at this point would be featuring Marvin Harrison Jr., Josh Palmer, Quinton Johnson, and now Aeneas Smith. You put Aeneas in there in the slot, swip swap him around with you know all the other two guys. I think you have a pretty strong wide receiver room all of a sudden. That's going to be your draft A for you guys following along at home. Draft A. That is your favorite. Definitely let me know in the comments section. You guys are more than welcome to rank these drafts as well. Let's go ahead and move into draft a B, where this draft, I feel, um, has the potential of a trade. We're going to go ahead and, you know, spoiler alert right there. Um, but this one may be, you know, gearing a little bit in a different direction. So let's go ahead and start things off with an interesting trade that we haven't covered on this channel before. Now, let me set the table for you guys before you're like, what the heck? Why would the Giants trade with the Chargers. Well, in this particular mock draft on PFF, I found myself looking at J.J. McCarthy coming off the board at pick number three to the New England Patriots. At pick number four, the um, Arizona Cardinals sticked and picked uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. And at this point, the New York Giants and Minnesota Vikings are getting very, very antsy for a quarterback and for a very good one that has fallen well beyond what a lot of people thought he would be drafted in Drake May, okay? Or even Jaden Daniels. I don't remember. Either one of the two very, very nice trade-up targets. The Chargers at this point have their eyes set on one of the top three at wide receiver, but they're also getting options for a trade down for, that are very lucrative. The New York Giants understand this. And if they want to get their guy... If they're going to get the last, let's say, early, you know, first round quarterback on the board, they're going to have to trade up. Otherwise, the Chargers, who do want an offensive lineman, could be tempted to trade down with the Minnesota Vikings, thus leaving the New York Giants empty handed. At this point, the Giants, to secure their quarterback, are going to go ahead and trade with the Chargers to guarantee themselves that quarterback in the top five. And at this point, it's not going to be a huge trade. At the, in terms of value, you're talking about a pick swap, a little bit of quarterback tax sprinkled in there. But the Giants, in giving up their third-round pick and gaining um, a fourth-round pick, are going to swap those with the Chargers and giving themselves a the position to go grab Drake May or Jaden Daniels. They get their quarterback of the future. The Chargers turn a fourth-round pick into a third-round pick, and this draft starts off with a bang for the Bolts, not only getting extra draft capital in terms of value, but also picking up a wide receiver that they want on this team. In this example, I've got the Chargers taking Rome Adunze, wide receiver out of Washington. Now, the reason that I wanted to feature Rome in this particular draft is because of the fact that Marvin Harrison came off the board before us. At that point, Roma Dunze becomes a very, very likely pick to the Chargers. I mean, of course, Neighbors is certainly up there too. But if we're looking for a wide receiver one with those kinds of traits, a Dunze certainly carries everything that you're looking for. And again, I have to push this narrative. Adunze, Neighbors, and Harrison are all very close to each other. Yes, I do think Neighbors, in terms of what he's going to be as a wide receiver, is ahead of Roma Dunze, but by how much? Adunze brings a lot to the table that neighbors probably won't be able to do in terms of an X receiver. And the Chargers, who are without a bona fide number one right now, would probably be a really nice fit for Roma Dunze to step in and be that guy. Granted, in this particular situation, the Chargers also turned a fourth into a third. It feels like a very nice solution for the Chargers to get some bang out of their buck here. Now, Adunze, the Chargers, Justin Herbert... This would be one heck of a complete weapon for the Bolts to feature on the outside, inside. He's got the big playability, the explosiveness, the hands, the contested catches, the great crisp uh, uh, tech, or, uh, um, technician style route running. It's just a very overall complete kind of guy. I think I've seen some comparisons to, uh, I don't know, Larry Fitzgerald a little bit. It just, it feels like a very, very nice fit for the Chargers. I think a lot of people, even in mock drafting him at pick number five with 
Malik Neighbors on the board and, and uh, 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 other talent are still going Odunze because of the fit for the Chargers. Either way, great selection here for the Bolts. Even better value on the trade down nonetheless. Let's move on to round number two where the Chargers are going to select Kamari Lassiter, cornerback out of Georgia. Now, if you go wide receiver round one, probably a good idea to go one or two positions, in my opinion, in round number two, and that's offensive line or corner. I think corner kind of edges it out for me. And Kamari Lasseter brings to the table something the Chargers desperately need, and it's great coverage ability, especially from the outside. This dude can do pretty much whatever you ask him to do. He's very scheme versatile, physical, uh, decently athletic. It feels like a very nice cornerback, too, for the Chargers, besides a guy like... Uh, Asante Samuel Jr. and really helps round out this position group that needed a lot of help. I feel very, very comfortable with Lasseter stepping in his rookie season and holding down the fourth there at cornerback two, maybe even contesting for one later down the road. But a very nice selection here. The Chargers get their wide receiver one. We get our corner one. Let's move into round number three where the Chargers got some value here. And the value, I'm going to tell you guys, this would be one of the more nutty things to watch on draft night. Not only did the Chargers trade um, to turn a fourth rounder into a third, but this, I think, gives them two back-to-back -back picks in the third round. A very powerful position to be in in the 2024 NFL draft. And with their first selection in the third round, I got the Chargers now in position to do so, taking Junior Colson, linebacker out of Michigan. This dude, if you're talking about tailor-made players, and I'm going to say this right now too, don't take Mike Sanders still out of the equation in round number two either. Imagine if the Chargers made it out with a couple of Michigan guys. Colson's kind of one of the dudes I have my eye on if we're able to figure out some extra draft capital in the third round. Some people say maybe he's more of a fourth round guy. I disagree. I think Junior, there's like two, maybe three linebackers in this entire class that can step in and be a difference maker in the way that Colson and, and Peyton Wilson, those guys can be. Colson is maybe a slightly less, less athletic version of Peyton Wilson, but he brings the oomph, man. Great run defender, superb coverage guy over the middle. He just feels like the perfect guy to match up with Derwin James in, in playing the box um, aggressively with those coverage abilities, defending the run handcrafted by Jesse Minter. It just feels like a great selection here that I don't know we would be able to do otherwise unless we had the extra selection in round number three. So Junior Colson, a very strong pick here. Feel very confident that he would mesh certainly super, super well with what the Chargers are trying to build on defense. His ability, especially complemented with Derwin James, especially complemented with the, the mean three in uh, Thule, Bosa, and Mack. I think he would have a heyday on this defense, man. So Junior Colson, the Chargers, at a linebacker to the group via an extra third round pick that adds so much flexibility in that round. Speaking of third round, let's go ahead and round it out with the New York Giants selection. Again, back-to-back -back picks. The Chargers are really fortifying the defense, which needs more help than people are giving it credit for. Um, Tavondre Sweat's going to step in and be that difference maker in the middle of the line. We know what Jim Harbaugh and Jesse Minter want to build on that defense. Something reminiscent of the Ravens, the Wolverines. Um, this would certainly help do that. You got your really nice linebackers on the outside. They're going to really help that system thrive. But on the inside, a lot of this is built in the trenches. The Chargers are going to go after offensive linemen. The Chargers are going to go after defensive linemen as well. Devondre Sweat as that nose tackle. Huge human being. going to gobble up you know, blocks. He's going to get to the quarterback, surprisingly. I think he's pretty good there. But more, most importantly, he's going to help in this run defense. I think having that kind of guy would really help me out. Kind of reminds me when the Chargers had Linval Joseph a little bit. Maybe a little bit more meat. Who knows? I like that quite a bit. Devondre Sweat, Junior calls in the defense. All of a sudden, looking pretty dang nice if you ask me with those two selections and to round out draft b let's go ahead and grab ourselves another receiver man the defense getting help via defensive line uh corner and linebacker the offense just really giving justin herbert his weapons of the future Roma Dunze, the guy that can play everywhere, primarily your new ex receiver, and now Malik Washington, another one of these guys in the fourth and fifth round that I think is going to be a huge steal for teams looking for slot players. Now, Malik Washington is no Malik Neighbors. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way right now. But Washington, 
there's a lot of things you can do the same <laughs> because of his explosiveness. Sure, he's not going to be Tyreek Hill in terms of speed, but maybe explosion, maybe agility, maybe acceleration. Those could be on the table here. Malik Washington, a smaller target. Yeah, maybe some people do draw comparisons to to uh, uh, Tyree Kill a little bit because of that and the, and, the, and the elusiveness. But the dude is pretty great in the slot. He's going to give you great separation. He's going to give you great, uh, depending on how he transfer, or translates into like physical or physicality. But I mean, sure, surely in the slot, he's going to get some work done. Um, I like this guy a lot, especially in the fourth round. If we go with a second wide receiver, um, you can convince me of a second or third rounder if you really want to double dip that early, but there's some awesome talent on the board if you're looking for a slot guy uh, in the fourth and fifth round. And that's kind of why Marvin Harrison Jr. and Roma Dunze kind of fit what the Chargers could be doing more so this season because as great as Malik Neighbors is and as much faith as I have in him to play that X receiver role, those other guys fit X receiver much better. And if you're still looking for a slot guy, there's going to be really good talent later down on down the board, okay? And again, I'm not saying that Malik Neighbors is is being pushed down for me. Not at all, right? But I'm just saying that that's kind of why you're seeing these, these mock drafts put them where they're putting them, okay? Because there's certainly a lot of potential uh, to grab your X receiver and then as well get a really nice slot receiver later down the road, okay? That's going to round out draft B. If you guys like draft B? Put it in the comment section, rank them, do what you want to do there. Now to round out this video, draft C. This is going to be more of what I feel is going to happen, my predictive mock draft. And we're going to try and do at least one of these every mock draft um, as to what I think the Chargers are actually going to do. Okay, so Jim Harbaugh, Joe Hortiz, the whole new regime in here. Keep all of this in mind as we kick off draft C that features a selection at pick number five of Malik Neighbors. If, if I had to guess what was going to happen in this draft, I think Marvin Harrison still goes before us at pick number five. And the Chargers, who will have their pick between Adunze and Neighbors, I think they still go Neighbors. Because Neighbors brings something that the Chargers haven't really had in speed and explosion, big playability. Certainly, Adunze could do a lot of the same and bring, you know, a lot of... of, of, of uh, um, play to that position as well but neighbors just scream something special and i still think that at pick number five it's most likely that that's going to happen it's probably still the thing that i would do if marvin harrison is off the board i think i stick and pick and i take malik neighbors and i don't look back there's a lot you can do with malik in this offense you're talking about an offense that's going to really feature more of a run balance kind of system if you give malik neighbors some space and a play action if you give him some setup with a nice route even something underneath can, can go all the way to the house all of a sudden. The power of Malik Neighbors in this offense cannot be understated. And that's kind of something that he brings that Adunze couldn't. I think, yes, big playability is, is certainly, you know, you can view pretty equal on both sides. I do think explosion and that kind of stuff is to Neighbors. But just that separation after the catch, the yak ability, it just feels like Neighbors has that on lockdown. And the Chargers... I think would really benefit from that in this particular offense. So I'm going to stick and pick. I'm taking neighbors. That would create one of the most exciting offenses in the league all of a sudden for the Chargers. And the Chargers, I think, would be very happy with that weapon and that talent and that, quite honestly, just the BPA mentality is in full effect here uh, when you're talking about what neighbors brings to the table. All right. Now, in round number two, I struggled with this because I do think if we're going to trade down, the most likely destination, I think, or the most likely round is probably going to be round number two. I think there's some guys that, you know, you can get in the middle of the second round, later the second round, that would really fit what the Chargers are looking for. And you can grab some extra capital via third or fourth round pick. In this, is, in this situation, though, I have the Chargers in round number two sticking and picking. They just have fallen in love with Mike Sainer still. I'm, I'm kind of going the same way. There's no guarantee that he, he's going to be there in the middle of the second round. Maybe if you trade down just a couple of spots, there's a shot. But Sanders still is quickly climbing boards, even as primarily just thought of as a slot receiver. He's that special. He's physical, dominant in coverage. He fits the Harbaugh and the Jesse Minter way. Just as I said with Junior Colson, this man is handcrafted by this coaching staff to be exactly what they need at corner. The Chargers need help desperately at this position. There's maybe fewer sure things in the second round than what Mike Sainer still is bringing to the table. Yes, you're probably going to need a little bit more help at corner. Certainly guys that are bigger on the outside, but really 
nickel is kind of a pretty much every snap, every down kind of position nowadays. And I feel like Sainra still would bring so much big playability to this team. It's worth it to stick and pick at 37 if Sainra still is still on the board. I'm certainly I'm certain that he will be, but I feel like the Chargers would benefit a lot from adding him to this defense. All right. In round number three, the Chargers. And again, the power of draft position are going to see Chris Jenkins still on the board. And at this point, I'm like, yeah, that's we're going to get a couple of Michigan guys. <laughs> if you're talking about uh, predictive mock drafts, I think you can certainly throw a couple of Michigan guys in there. I think, honestly, some of my favorite Michigan guys that you can look at are actually not going to be featured in these mock drafts that don't go all the way to round seven. There's like three offensive linemen that I love in rounds like five through seven that the Chargers could go after at that point. At this point, though, again, defensive line is very important to this team. And Chris Jenkins, if he's available at 69, you take him. You don't look back. The dude is a monster. <laughs> He's got some of the freakiest strength that you're ever going to see. He's great in run blocking. Uh, maybe can use some work in a couple different areas per technique, but the man would be a staple on this defensive line. Chargers know what they're getting out of this guy. They know what he's going to add to the defense. He's a great selection in, in round number three to help you know start strengthening those trenches a little bit, which again, we're kind of going towards a more predictive mock draft. I, I predict at least one steal. And if it's in round three to Chris Jenkins, I feel very, very good about that. What about in round number four where the Chargers have two selections? Well, let's go ahead and start here with Dominic Puny, who is a fantastic option pretty much for any team. And you got to start thinking what's going to happen in round four. Okay, this draft is deep at offensive line. There's a chance that Puny is not there. I think, you know, from what I've drafted, he's there, you know, a decent amount of times that I feel confident that he could be available to the Chargers at 105. Um, but there's a lot of skill positions in that range of mid third to mid fourth that I think are going to take precedent. So Puni to me, I think is a great way to start chipping away um, at this idea of what the Chargers want to do on the offensive line. And this is probably one of the best, you know, uh, situations you could be in to start building that with how much talent there is on the offensive line down the board. This guy is a super versatile dude on the line. He can play pretty much anywhere. You need him at center, awesome. You need him at guard, awesome. You need him at tackle, awesome. The dude's big. He's a mauler. He's a run, you know, uh, 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 style, you know, power kind of guy on the offensive line. He'd be great. He'd be awesome for this team. If anything, one of the premium backups you're going to find in this draft uh, because of how versatile he is. But he is the future, mind you. He will be the future of this team at some point, wherever he plays. And the flexibility adds a lot of desire for me to look at him at 105 and say, yep, I like this guy. Let's go ahead and pick him up. No brainer. Okay. The Chargers building these trenches the last two rounds, defensive line, offensive line. Let's round it out with our last selection in draft C, the Chargers. Chalk the world and go back-to-back -back offensive line. And like I said earlier in the video, Ortiz and the Ravens did some of their best work in the middle rounds. Let's grab some awesome value in this particular draft class. Round out draft C with Matt Gonsalves, who I've talked about a couple of different times. I view Gonsalves as a huge value in this draft. Unfortunately, yes, I think it was an ACL injury early in the season last year. Um, he should be ready by kickoff, hopefully. If not, you know, there's no pressure to put this guy in too soon. We got, you know, Trey Pipkins out there. This guy's going to be more or less a backup for a while. But I think that after the Trey Pipkins contract is over, Gonsalves steps in and brings huge, huge value to the position. Not only is he, I think, one of the best talents still on the board at offensive line, but quite honestly, he's one of the best fits for what Jim Harbaugh wants to do on the right side. Him, Blake Fisher, a couple of JC Latham. There's a couple of guys on the right tackle position that just fit like a puzzle piece. And Gonsalves to me does that. He's great. He's huge. He's he's powerful, right? Him and Puny on the right side or or wherever that kind of shakes out later on. That, that's a fantastic combo to have if you're trying to build, you know, a nice power running attack. And at that value, I don't think I'm ever going to pass it up. So you guys let me know what you think of that, man. I, again, this is more predictive. Feels very Harbaugh in the middle rounds. If people keep saying it's a Harbaugh draft. It's a Harbaugh draft. They're taking an offensive line number five overall. No. Harbaugh knows this class better than anybody else. Hortiz is a mid-round offensive line genius. This is a very deep offensive line class. Let's go get the skill positions early. 
and grab the offensive line value later. That's kind of the idea I kind of like, man. It's Gonsalves, Fisher, uh, uh, Puny. These are the guys, man. These are the guys that I'm, I'm really looking at and thinking, yeah, yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So let's uh, let's recap backwards, okay? Draft C, we got Gonsalves, we got Puny, we got Jenkins. Those trenches looking great all of a sudden. And then we got our corner and receiver in uh, Malik Neighbors. So fantastic options there. Draft B, uh, starting here with Malik Washington. Uh, we picked up Tavondre Sweat, a nice pick swap there with the Giants. We got Junior Coulson in the third. We got Kamari Lasseter in the second. And Roma Dunze with that first pick. Very nice uh, 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 overall draft there. And then finally, our first draft A right here. We got Ania Smith, great slot receiver. We got Cade Stover, tight end of the future. We got Blake Fisher, right tackle. We got Kool-Aid McKinstry and Marvin Harrison Jr., yeah, that draft feels pretty stacked. I think I'm going to see a lot of draft A's in the comment section. But quite honestly, all three of these make a lot of sense. And I feel like it gets a lot of people excited for what the future could potentially hold. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. If you like what you saw here, hit us up with a like and sub on your way out. We're getting close to 50,000 subs, y'all. Thank you for bringing me this far. I can't wait to start setting my eyes on 100K, baby. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Much appreciated. Big love to you, Bolt fam. We'll catch you guys later. As, uh, as always, Bolt up. Stay frosty. The dream of Marvin Harrison Jr. at five remains alive.